So I'm actually a biological psychiatrist, despite what you heard. And I greatly respect the tradition of farce and comedy that infuses the Latka Hamantash lecture series. But tonight I must invoke the insights of Sigmund Freud, who was the first psychiatrist to illuminate humor, particularly the hidden meanings that are covered over and made palatable by jokes, ridicule, and trivialization. And I'd remind you that humorous traditions can preserve in plain sight the most important, hidden, and unacceptable truths in a culture. So let me quote a learned doctor at the end of the 19th century, Wilhelm Sternberg, who found it impossible to understand why the Jewish cuisine, which he thought unhealthful, although if you've ever been to Germany, as I have recently, then what he was recommending to improve the German Jews would have taken them out of the frying pan and into the frying pan. <laughs> And he said he couldn't understand why the Jewish cuisine persisted even among Jews who had converted out of Judaism. He said they had given up the religion of their fathers, but not the cooking of their mothers. <laughs> this is a very prejudiced statement. Perhaps the most prejudiced nuance of all is the imputation that there is no religion of the mothers. I have discovered, in fact, that the Latka and Hamantashen are relics of a most ancient and woman-centered religious system that predates Judaism by many millennia. For generations, we have been told that these foods, traditionally prepared by women, celebrate military victories and religious restoration. This makes no sense. Was these wars? Were these food fights? What in the world do they have to do with warfare? Well, there are some clues we have to their meaning until now. First of all, the Hamantash and Latka come out of armed conflicts that went on between the Jews, the Greeks, and the Persians in the first millennium BC. But if these foods are symbols, the key question is not what these groups fought over, but what myths did the combatants have in common? And each of these peoples has a myth of the kidnapped queen, Helen of Troy and Esther of Shushan, and the ingenious military strategies used to rescue her. And this, of course, is a clear ethnological relic of an ancient and true event shared by all of them. Esther is, of course, the name of the pre-monotheistic goddess Ishtar, and Helen is the daughter of a god who was worshipped in her own right. So let me remind you first that the goddess mother predates God the father by a considerable period of time. And what you're looking at here is a figurine which originates before our modern form of the Homo sapiens. This is a quarter of a million years old, and you can recognize from the uh, outlines that this is uh, a woman who is not exactly a sex queen, but is a goddess and presumably <laughs> could cook, although I couldn't guarantee it. So until I became interested in these questions, it was impossible to find a record from before these women. But the ancients did leave records, but they were pre-digital and they were mechanically coded, they weren't electronic. But I have been able to discover the true connection of the Latka, the Hamantash, and the goddess by use of a technological breakthrough, a non-digital, non-electronic computer, which a generous donor has bought from my laboratory at considerable expense. Many of these records turn out to be images with near photographic quality as old as they are. Tonight, for the first time, I will make public my findings and my computer, and I apologize for making a serious event out of, a, uh, out of uh, something that should be funny. So this is my computer, <laughs> as you can see. And uh, here are my findings. The myth goes back considerably further than 250,000 years. Now, that figurine that I showed you was actually discovered at the northern end of the great African Rift Valley. Uh, in the Golan Heights, but this is the <laughs> this is the Aldivai Gorge at the southern end of the Rift Valley, where most of the early hominid fossils have been discovered, which is in fact the Garden of Eden. And the first thing I can show you, uh, that's where we were created. The first thing I can show you from there is a very old family tree, and here it is. And, uh, now, it was very hard to get the people to pose for this slide. This is the last time that this family was ever together. So uh, it's a really a, a precious thing. And uh, it dates the split, the breakup of this family, to five to seven million years ago. 
And uh, what happened? Well, we didn't look the same then as we do now, but what happened was that <laughs> this young woman, <laughs> Esther, was princess of the human tribe, and she was being raised by her uncle. A neighboring tribe, struck by her great beauty and grace, kidnapped her. <laughs> After a few skirmishes, the humans and chimps had peace talks and came up with a peace process that would end the conflict. And these were the negotiators. On the human side, you had Mordecai. And on the chip side, you had Haman. <laughs> Both learned people. And they came to an accord known uh, as the Olduvai Accords. 